Howdy, me Flobart here, and welcome. Yep, it's Future Friday on a Wednesday. Mm, yeah, okay. So, um, switches. Can be simple. You could swap meshes, you can swap materials, you can do all kinds of stuff. Step into the area, you can add meshes, remove meshes, change them, whatever. Um, you can also do switches. Put the click in there just so it's obvious. So you walk over, and right now I'm just using a box collision. You can actually do it in different ways. But by stepping up close enough, it actually will activate that light. But it didn't activate all the lights. But if I want to do that one, it'll activate the other three that are on that wall. And you can see there's a buttload of switches over here. One switch per light. And they are separate blueprint. Bleh, bleh, English. They are separate separate blueprints. Yes, it has been one of those days. Um, so the way that I've got it set up is simple enough and easy enough. Let's actually take a look at this in a two-player perspective. All right, I'm going to keep this is the, the server or the client right here, and I'm going to move the server around, and we'll just look at it from the client perspective. So we'll look at these two right here. All right, so the first one, you see, it just changes from a cube to a pyramid. Very simple, and the other one just adds the, uh, the pyramid to the top of it. All right, so. We go inside and we'll look at this wall with the client, and the client can actually do the same thing. We'll come in here as the server, and nothing has been replicated, by the way. You know, I, I'm looking at um, the wrong screen here. So we'll turn around and set him on what was going to be. Uh, prism. I just didn't finish doing it. Um, so one switch will will only work with one light, or will work with multiple lights, or um, we'll go back in here as a single. So as you can see, I've got this switch right here set up just for this one light, and this one will actually operate all three lights. And these are just set for individuals. And what I have done is set it up to where, you know, I'm using Cindy Studio's assets. So, get the light switch. When you click on the switch, this is switch number three. And this light switch to use is switch number three. So, if I went in here and checked on all of them, this is four. And that's going to be light for, uh, using light switch four and so forth. When you set a switch in, and let's just say put one light switch here on the wall and let's just set it up at a realistic height 120. Now this is switch number we'll call this 12. Okay. Now all I gotta do is drag in a light and let's rotate it so it's flat on the wall. And I'm going to tell it to use switch number 12. And let's move it down to 150. Yeah, I have so many OCDs. Um, yeah, let's put it at zero. So now, by having that switch set as number 12 and the light set to use switch number 12. I can control that, no problem. If I want to add more lights in, they could be this type of light, it could be any kind of light, it doesn't matter what they actually look like. Just as long as you set up the switch and the light together, one switch will activate any or all of them that have that same number assigned to it. And it's a lot easier than what you might think. So, what have I done here on the light switch? Now I can probably refine this a little bit better 
So I'm going to open up both of these so I can switch between them. The light switch itself, yo, what's up, brother? It's just this. It's a light switch, and it's a box collision. And what I've done here is I've created a custom event called Toggle Lights. And what it's going to do is get all actors of class, and in this case it's going to get, it was originally called Ceiling Light, because that's what I was making. Um, so it was originally getting this blueprint. So get all actors of a class is going to call this particular class of blueprint, and it's going to do a for each loop, which then allows me to break it, and not really break it, but from the array element, I can drag any of the variables that are in here. I can now use those variables in here, such as switch to use. So I brought that switch to use down, and I'll make a new switch just to kind of go through the process a little bit at a time. And then all I did was I asked, is it equal, equal, just equal to the switch number, which is the number that's here. Default number is one. Um, and if it is equal to the number in that individual um, light, then basically, if yes, then you turn on the light or turn off the light. And these are variables that are actually inside of the light itself, not inside the switch. So when you begin overlap, cast to character, so any any character or player can actually d trigger this. It's going to run toggle lights, which is this custom event, and it's going to also play a sound Um, event begin play, I'm forcing it to basically set the visibility to false so the light is off. So it is in an off state by default. The turn on mechanism is basically the same thing. Get all actors of class, it's going to get a for each loop, and we're using the light switch itself for what we're actually getting the reference from. And it is doing the same thing. Switch number is equal to the switch to use. And if so, then toggle of visibility. Toggle. Not, not set visibility. I use a toggle visibility. So I don't know why. Toggle visibility seemed to work more efficiently than set visibility did. Using set visibility, it was unreliable. It would sometimes mess up the default. I, I can't explain it. It just did not work. 100% of the time. So toggle visibility is what I use for that. And same thing for turn off. It toggles. It just toggles it from the state that it is in to the other state. So if it was visible, it'll now become not visible. So it toggles them instead of actually telling them to be on or off. And since it's default of off, then it will, by normal state of things, it will just turn it on. Now you can use this and trigger this however you want. Um, you can set it up to where as you're running around and you get close enough to it, um, you can set a, a variable saying I am at the light switch. And then when you, if you're in a first person mode or however you want to do it, um, when you're at that you can have it bring up a little small um, widget blueprint and show on the screen saying um, hit E to turn on light or F to turn switch or flip switch or whatever and then you can use that key binding and then go ahead and do it. Um, you could do it either way. Um, I just set it up to where it's quick and easy where you can just cross really close to it to engage the switch. It was simpler and it worked. So the thing for sure whenever you're doing this is the switch number has to be visible and in the ceiling light itself, the switch to use also has to be visible. Just you click here and the eyeball opens up. And that allows you to be able to click on one in the map and set the switch to use. Now if I change that number, I could actually have it say turn on these lights. So they work independently from each other, but they need each other to actually function. So if you walk into a room and you want a light to actually work, and that's what I'm going to do here is actually create a light using the Cinti assets. Um, I'm just going to dump these guys into 
that just to clear up this area. Since this is just a test map, um, what I'll do is first off, I'm in my blueprints folder, so let's do um, new blueprint actor desk lamp and we'll open that up. We'll find us a nice little desk lamp in here. Got to love Cindy Studios assets, man, I'm telling you. That's another thing you can do also, is like the ceiling fan. Um, I've set it up to where it can look like the ceiling fan's on with the rotation of the, the blades themselves. And that's one of the things that I was going to play around with at some point, was actually to take the um, the ceiling fan and attach it to a switch the same way. Um, but I was going to use the um, line trace method of looking at the switch and then hitting the e, e key or whatever. Yeah. Going to complicate things, but let's not get complicated just yet. I love getting complicated. So, desk lamp. Um, kind of want to do that one. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to do that one. Um, well, it's a desk type lamp. So I'm just going to add component and I'm just going to call this lamp because I can always clone this later and use whatever I want. Then we're going to add in a light. Just seems like this one should have a spotlight, you know, kind of glowing from there. about right. Um, all right, well, let's put you back at one. All right, that's good enough. And you can do whatever color and everything else you want, intensity and that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to worry about it. And I'm not going to worry about the visibility of it just yet. But let's go ahead and, since we don't want to have to walk in and out every time, I'm just going to put a desk right over here. And we can just walk over to the desk and, and see as soon as we go in. And yes, I know I can use the search bar, but I'm weird like that. There's a workbench. Counters. Here's a pillow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any of these will actually work. I'm just being. Well, I want a specific thing. Whatever. We'll just take this one. Desk. And throw it right up against the wall. Yeah, it matters more of the actual position here than it does anything else. I, I'm just totally weird my OCDs. So we'll go to Blueprint, we'll get our desk lamp. You can see that it's already working. And that's lovely. Walk over and we can see the lamp is on. And if we were to actually go in here now, we could do, from the event begin play, I like to go ahead and just set this to not working at all. And spotlight, set visibility, and we'll leave it unchecked so that it, it defaults as being off. We could see that the light was on, but we're just going to turn it off. Now, technically, we could just, you know, bind a little pressure pad and or whatever and walk over here. Okay, we see the light is off. But I want to be able to bind this to have a, a switch number so that it'll work with my regular light switch. So if I can put my light switch here, then 
can see it's there. Now it's defaulting. See, there's no lights on there. Is um, it's defaulting to switch one. Wait, where are you? Which one is switch one? That's switch one. Why didn't you activate switch one lights? Yeah, odd. Very odd. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and with this, we have our switch. Let's open up the switch itself. Now, it's only going to work with that particular lamp type. So, could probably set it up a different way, but right now it's actually utilizing only that particular blueprint style. Alright, so let's create this from scratch. We want a new switch. And it doesn't have to be anything major. We can just have it set to where. Yeah, I don't know why that did not do the other light. So we'll set it up to where we have a new switch and we'll just put it on this side of the desk so that it it will activate that. Alright, so we're just going to do a new blueprint class, actor, um, new switch, go into it, and don't actually have to put a mesh to it, but I'm going to anyway, just because that's how I am. So we'll just grab that and go back in here. Add component, and we'll just call this switch. And now we need a box collision. Just call it trigger. All right, so because if we're going to set this on the desk flat, we need it to be able to. Um, which, you know, we could go ahead and just do that. Lay it flat, and then we'll do our box collision. You are such an ass. I don't know why Unreal Engine 4 just chooses to ignore the fact that it, you're telling it to do one thing, and it decides to do another. You know what? That's good enough. So now we can go back in here and we'll put our new switch on the desk. Walk over, doesn't matter the orientation, and let's rotate it. Now for some reason it is sticking through. And we'll change this back to five. So that box collision is going to be sticking out good enough to where we can actually engage with it. So we need to start adding some variables in here. First off, um, we will call this our uh, switch to use. And this will be an integer. And we want to expose that. Gotta love exposing ourselves. Yep, I should have announced in, in Discord that I'm streaming. But it is, you know, Wednesday night, and I have been trying to stick with my schedule of, um, you know, streaming when I'm supposed to. Switch number. This are going to be an integer as well, and exposed. We're going to give them a default number of 1, and this needs to be set to 1 as well. So they have a default number, 
you know. So if you, you place them in there, they're going to work one way or the other, and, and you're just going to have to set it on your own. So, okay, now that we've got these in here, if we click on our... Oh, my God, would you close all your shit up? I did not tell you to open that up. So we click on our switch. Switch number. And our desk, we don't care about. Um, desk lamp, we're telling it to use switch number one. So that's why we've got them in here. But let's go ahead and take this step farther. Switch to use. And in this variable, let's go ahead and go from here and tell it um, switch number so that we actually have that. And I'll show you why in just a moment. And same thing here. Switch number. So now, whenever we look at them in the map, this says switch number instead of default. So switch number one and switch to use is switch number there. So just a neat little way of, of keeping things clean and I don't know, a little bit nicer to look at. All right, so desk lamp and new switch. All right, with that, what we need to do here is the switch. We're going to need to engage something in here. Go ahead. That's why I do streams. If you got questions, ask them. That's why I do it that way. And yes, my internet is absolutely crappy tonight. Hit the switch we want to use. Yep, custom event. We're going to use the switch. With that, we are going to get all actors of class. And the class that we want to use is going to be our desk lamp. So we're going to be calling this desk lamp. And we just use a for each loop. So that we can pull that information out. Since we've done that, and I'm going to stop doing some of my freaking OCDs and just... There we go. From our array element, we want to go ahead and get our switch to use because that's what we're going to compare. And I'm just going to drag from here and say equal equal and equal integer. Grab switch number, plug it in there. So that's all we got to do for asking are these two equal? And of course, branch node. Then we have to decide what we're going to do whenever we we do this. We can actually then, without having to do much else in this right here, um, we could probably go ahead and, and set up our functionality in here. Um, and if it is true, we want to... What do we call our light? Just spotlight. Um, let's call this light bulb. This so it has a different name to it. Compost and save. We get from this array element as soon as Unreal Engine 4 decides that it, I'm I'm allowed to continue. Thank you. So we'll drag off from here and get light bulb. And that's all we're doing is we're just getting a reference to our light bulb. And we're going to use that to toggle visibility. So every time we engage this right here, we're going to do this. We're going to toggle the visibility of it. Um, but where do we 
where do we run this? How do we tell it to, to do its thing? Well, we have this. Um, the box collision here. We're going to right click on that. Add event on component begin overlap. And from this overlap event, all we're going to do is use the switch. But we're going to drag out from other actor and cast to character. If you want just a player only, then you cast to the player character or third person character blueprint or player underscore base or whatever. Um, come on, man, what's your question? You say you have a question, well, just ask it. I'm all ears, bro. So any character, any any body that's moving around the map now can do this versus just the player only. So from there, we're just going to drag out, and we're not we're not worried about doing something for the character. We're just going to use switch, and because I like having the sound, um, let's play sound at location. And I'm just going to use my click sound location. You know, we can just get our switch and get world location. So if we're using sound attenuation and things like that, that's why we would want to isolate it there. That way you don't hear it on the other side of the map. So in theory, that's all we got to do is walk up to our switch and it toggles the um, the visibility state of the light itself. I mean, if we came over here, control C, control V, and put a second one on there, turn on both of them, or you can actually just say, okay, I don't want you to come on, I want you to use switch number two. So only that light will come on whenever I use that switch. And these are no longer going to affect it whatsoever. They're just still doing their thing. But since I want both my lamps to work, I'm going to change this back to switch one. Let's move you to the back side of the lamp over there. You're at 80. You're at 80. Grab my switch, put it in the middle. Now, both lamps. Yay, we have Bluetooth lamp. <laughs> All right. Um, when you're, you're talking about um, blocking. You're talking about um, like whenever I decide to swing my axe and you decide you're going to block so you're going to raise your shield. Is that what you're talking about? You want to manually do it. You don't want it to happen automatically. So when and you, the player that's being attacked, you want to be able to do um, you know, a block. You want to raise your shield up. But whenever you raise your shield up, you want to actually have an effect of nullifying the attack. The easiest way I can say to, to think about that process without actually going in and saying use this blueprint, use that blueprint, use this variable, use that variable, is think about each individual little thing like this. What I want to happen whenever I step on this pad is I want that red cube here, I want that red cube to turn into a pyramid. But whenever I'm not there, I want it to go back to being a cube. Think of things as a yes and no, always. Um, whenever the example of I come at you with an axe and I swing at you, but you've got a shield, so you raise your shield up and you block my attack. I don't do any damage to you, but maybe I do damage to your shield. Um, but if you don't have that and I come over and swing my axe and I hit you, I do damage to you. But 
you want it to know that you've raised your shield so whenever the attack happens you want it to deflect the damage or not do damage to you but maybe do damage to your shield maybe give your shield health um, you look at something like this right here think of it as a way of you I want you this pressure pad I want you to do a specific function I want you to make th those two things change stepping on it see I'm on it and step off it goes back now to do something like that you have to break down each individual phase of it um, and this is more of my, my thing is I'd rather teach you how to be able to do things on your own instead of saying use this blueprint use that variable um, to break down and it can be very complicated and it, and it is in a way but it isn't if you think about it and break down each individual part of what you need to happen um, the perfect example here is whenever I left click I'm gonna do a, um, a line trace and I left it visible for a short duration so I could see that that's what I did where it originated from that kind of stuff um, what needs to happen is yeah and then that's that's a very common thing is um, uh, using line traces for hit detection so if I go to my character and I want character open not in mannequin I want this character open alright so let's close these two guys off here so I have nothing attached this is basically whenever I left click I want to throw a line trace but only if I'm using my first person view with the crosshair when I turn my crosshair on um, in the essence it needs to make sure that I'm actually able to so whenever I go to my first person mode it turns on my crosshair when I go out of it it turns it off so only when I'm using my crosshair can I use my my line trace so that's another thing for me is I can't use my line trace right now hitting the left mouse button does nothing but as soon as I go to that view I get a crosshair and I can shoot the, um, the line trace so using a variable variables are going to be your number one thing um, you need to know what has happening so hit detection of course you know when you break your hit result uh, let's just say print string get the hit actor and plug it in get a uh, display name or two text or however you want to do it um, so it reports back what you're actually hitting so I hit wall door 400 by 400 wall 400 by 4 why is it 4? I guess because wall number 3 so it reports back what you're actually hitting desk that was the switch that's a lamp and I love lamp so what you do with that that trace is then you have to break it down um, if I'm performing my attack then again also when you're creating your weapons and I don't have any weapons in here but just as an example okay whatever this um this bottle here now if you know this being upside down say this is your handle and this is the the blade of your sword or your dagger or whatever else um, when you're setting up your actual item itself this right here is just your handle section it doesn't do anything blade section you can actually put a box collision around this right here so with that box collision that surrounds your blade and get it nice and tight and everything as tight as you want it to be so that that box collision will now trigger an event so as you're performing your animation if you leave that on at all times imagine a lightsaber and thankfully a lightsaber has a, you know the ability to turn on and off right so if you had your lightsaber on 24 hours a day seven days a week 
as we all do sometimes, you know, leave our lightsabers on. Um, imagine what would happen if, if, with that being able to cut through anything, your body, your car, your bed, your nightstand, your wall, your, your cat fluffy, whatever, you know. So you don't want it to cut through everything all the friggin' time, so you turn the switch off. Now you don't have that blade sticking out, and it's no longer active. You can't kill anything, you can't cut anything with your lightsaber when it's turned off. So think of your box collision as being off most of the time. Because if it's not, as you're walking around carrying your sword, and every time it slaps against your leg, it's going to cut your leg off. So whenever you perform your attack, you get to a certain point, you can use an animation notify to trigger, okay, now make the blade active. Or box collision, allow this box collision to now start doing its events at this point. And then you use another animation notify that whenever you're coming back from your attack, before you get done doing your animation. Because you don't want to do it before and after the animation. You want to do it during the animation with an animation notify. So, um, if you think about animations, oh, let's see, whatever. You see our character right here. Before he starts doing his animation, we can actually pause our animation and get to a certain specific point. Whenever I bam hit there, I can insert an animation notify. See so notifies I can right click, add notify, new notify, or play sound, play particle effect. This is like what you're you're doing is you're just creating a new notify time for particle effects, trail, new sync marker, but adding a, an, a new notify in or a skeleton notify you know, or just a regular notify is going to say, okay, at this point, think about it like this as you're running. When your, your foot touches the ground in the animation, you can actually do this, play a sound the sound of a footstep. but It'll only play at this point in the animation. No matter how fast you're going, it'll only happen when it gets to this point in the animation. And so you can you do your footstep planning that way. But think about it like this. If you're swinging a sword, um, this animation notify, you can now call back in your player blueprint and say that, okay, when you, you receive this notify, allow the weapon to become active. Okay, um, and again, as you're you're going through your animation, say okay, now I no longer want the particle effect to work, or I I, I no longer want the uh, the axe to do damage at this point, or whatever. You can just break it down in your animation and put your notifies in where you want it to actually enable and disable the, your the ability of your weapon to do damage. So your weapon won't be active all the time. Putting the actual damage capability on the weapon itself means that if you miss with your axe, it's just not going to do the damage, or your sword, you're just not going to do the damage. Um, that's just one way of doing it. There's so many different ways of applying damage, but then again, using the, the line trace, um, it's good more... For, I, I like it more for projectiles or for things that are, you know, not really proximity. Because this is actually a line trace by channel. I mean, you've got, um, hello, right click, thank you. Line trace profile, multi line trace. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways of doing it. You can actually set up a spherical trace. Um, uh, yeah, Sphere Trace by channel, and with that, Sphere, well, let's just set it up here. Um, I'm going to do right mouse button. Whenever I click this, I want to do a Sphere Chase. Sphere trace by channel. 
start point okay well we're gonna do it basically how I did it up here um, normally what I do is I grab like the FPS camera which is where I'm actually looking from and since we need a start location we we'll use that as our start location get your ass back there thank you we'll get world location yes and no um, you can also use it as part of a focus mechanism if you think about it how do you know that you know you're gonna hit your target are they within range of you whenever they are in range you want your character to turn slightly so you're facing them and actually engage properly in combat and look properly in combat you know, see that's one of the things is, is also you can use a sphere trace by channel to and I'll, I'll show what I'm talking about here in just a second radius um, we'll do a thousand sphere trace by channel um, I haven't used sphere trace a whole hell of a lot but let's uh, get forward vector and let's do float so it'll be a vector times float and we'll just do that and we'll add the two together vector plus vector for the end of the trace um, uh, visibility for duration five seconds yeah I so if I come in here and all right so we can see the the radius of that that's probably a little bit big um, radius 500 is too small that's actually the, the wrong radius but yeah okay but you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, you got the, the red line and the black line. So if we change it also to a thousand and two hundred. So you can see it a little bit better here. It's to show, we want to know if there's anything inside that radius. Um, And I'm actually projecting it out. Um, so we can actually get rid of that. So yeah, just it's just going to check that radius the radius that we set here now um, so when we call that event we're going to do this we're going to do whatever at that point so I mean what do you want to do at that point you're you're checking to see if anything in particular is there um, well, the point is, if, what I was saying before, though, is break down every individual problem as a single individual piece of the puzzle. Um, the sword can't do damage unless the sword can do damage. What? Variables. Um, right now, if you think, I cannot do my normal line trace because I'm not in first person view. I don't have my crosshair because I'm not in first person view. But as soon as I go into first person view, I now have a crosshair and I can now do that. Because I am in first person view and because I'm using my crosshair, because the two are there, I can do it. 
see the left mouse button, is my crosshair on, then I can actually do my line trays. You actually have to break it down and say, can my sword do damage? That needs to be a variable type. Um, if it can't do damage, then it's not going to hurt anything. So right here, if I do break it result, if for some reason hit actor is equal equal to my player character, you can do something. Um, let's just say from true print text get away monkey boy but only it'll only say that if there's another player in my radius since there isn't it just it doesn't do anything I can still do my line trace but it doesn't detect anything there but if I come in here and there is two people do my line trace what the hell was that all about it's not doing it Um, and my player is, anytime you're dealing with your player also, you have to change it from actor type you know, for your collision preset to block all dynamic, because if you do not, whenever you're, okay, see it, it turned green, there is a, a collision. I thought I turned that off. No, okay, I, I put that back in. Um, but yeah, it needs to... You need to always be doing checks here. I don't know why it's not picking up the player. On hit result, hit actor. Should have been in close enough proximity to do that. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to mess with that some more. I've, I have not used that much, but break down each individual thing. So I say for, for this right here, it's building my trace and it's returning back and saying what I'm hitting with the actual thing here. So if while I'm playing and players running around the line trace actually intersects with another player it'll report back saying player base one. Um, at that point you could also do um, I do have a health bar in this right? Yeah okay you see I've got a health bar for the client and for the server, everything is lovely. So instead of doing this, let's um, hit actor. Let's um, cast to player. Let's go directly to casting to that, which is what I probably should have done on on the um, the player, on the other one. If it hit specifically the player underscore base, what I want to do here is. apply damage one of the better uses of this I saw at one point was um, somebody had actually taken this and ap apply physics and turns on the the ragdoll effect so when you hit somebody or shoot somebody in the arm their arm flails for a minute and then they can return to using it again uh, the event 
instigator. This could be, okay, the object reference could be your sword. Um, Fred was killed by so-and-so with a, a sword. Damage causer could be the actual object itself, the uh, grenade or the sword or whatever. The person who did it is the instigator. So Beefalo Bart hit um, Emery with a sword. Could be reported up on the screen. Um, you can build your own class reference to damage. I've never done it, but I just leave that like so. We're going to apply 25 damage. So now, I don't have death or anything set up in here. So as we can see, our client's just standing there minding his own business. You, you can't see what the, the server is doing right now. Shoot. It's applying damage, but huh, why isn't it doing damage? Well, because we're just applying damage. Um, we don't have a way for our player to actually handle damage yet. So let's come back over here for now and event any damage is already a pre-built um, node here. And what we're going to do is we will grab our health, we'll get and set at the same time. So what we're going to do here is we are going to subtract float from float we want to subtract our health our uh, damage from our health so we get our health subtract the amount of damage and then we're going to set our health to that new number after doing some of that math stuff so we're just going to take that away and that should process our health and since our health is actually going to be reflected in our health bar come over here I'm being an asshole I'm sitting on the desk hey get off the desk I'll show you I'll shoot you you can see the health bar going down because I just shot him a few times so break down each individual problem with when I'm doing this, what I want to happen, how do I need to get that to happen? Um, I need for my line trays to cause damage. And yeah, just break down each individual problem and think about all the different variables that can be into effect and then figure out what variables you need to actually create. Um, at this point, if you wanted the player to receive a, a hit in it, that causes their body to perform an animation um, or to knock them down or whatever what happens when that that attack happens in this case we're applying damage um, you, you then have to build in fail saves well what if I get to zero well then I need to, to create a death script so then you can do death at that point um, I usually create a custom event just for death. Um, see what works, see what then needs to be replicated, uh, replicate what you have to when you have to. Some things don't need to be replicated. Um, I can get this new value and I can check is it, well, how about, is it less than or equal to zero? Do I have no health left? Well, then if if it is, first off we need to cap it at zero. So the first thing we're going to do is just you block the damage. Well, well, first off, um, you need to think about how you're going to apply the damage. Whenever you block the damage, whenever you block, you hit the the key to raise your your shield. The player can no longer receive the damage. So, um, the actual thing that's going to get hit is going to be the, the shield. Shield can now take damage, but the player cannot. Um, yeah, so when your, your shield's up, then player can player be damaged or 
player damage, um, just you turn off that variable. Um, is server or is whatever you create that variable um, can be hurt or can receive or whatever can get hurt, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, that variable is by default going to be off unless you want it to be on. So now by checking that, I can always be hurt. But if I do my right mouse button to raise my shield, we'll say, very first thing that um, I want to do is I want to set my player to where I can't be hurt. Can be hurt or can get hurt, leave it unchecked, is no. Um, or you can break it down to where if you're doing, how are you physically applying the damage? Is your weapon physically applying the damage by having to touch the other player? Because if so, whatever it hits needs to, to receive the damage. Um, at this point, whenever I'm applying my line trace, I'm casting to the player and I'm applying damage. If the hit actor is the player underscore base, then I'm going to apply 25 damage to them. But since I, I now have created this mechanism right here, right mouse button, essentially is raise my shield. Player cannot get hurt. So I can then check right here before I apply damage. We'll break this. We'll actually bring in the branch node. And we can now drag from as our, our player character get can get hurt. That could also be has shield raised, um, whatever. Um, so let's actually change that to is shield raised. So you can see right there, we're going to ask, does the player have his shield raised? And if the answer is true, we do whatever. We apply that damage to the shield. Um, if it's false, then we're going to go ahead and just apply the regular damage. You know, I mean, you, you could have your shield attached however um, you want. Um, you could actually come in here with another variable shield health and make that an integer or a float or say float would be better here um, because this is a float it should be an integer but it's not um, so shield health we have that variable now um, you can now apply this damage to the shield health. So you're applying damage to the the actor, then we can actually come in here and get our shield health. And we can then say, okay, let's apply this damage to the shield. Um, yeah, you, you have to break it down to each individual problem. It's like in this point right here, if the shield is not raised, then we're going to apply 25 damage. But if I hit the right mouse button, um, it's going to raise my shield. Boom. And is shield raised? Yes. So now whenever we, we look, we ask, has the shield been raised? No, then apply damage to there. Now you can also do something as, as well is, and I'm just clouding everything up here with another custom event damage shield so in the damage shield you can actually say okay um, get our health for our shield and we're going to do the same basic process right here um, and what we're going to do is figure out what the damage would have been 
and same basic principle here event any damage that damage can now be applied one way or the other but instead of the player being the one taking the damage we can actually just run uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. damage shield event from the player so we can actually run this event so if the the shield is raised then we do this this custom event which is what we're building down here damage the shield get our shield health and we're going to subtract 10 damage every time our shield gets hit just break down every problem into little solutions and at some point you'll get there so when you damage the shield you're going to take 10 away well you also need to check to see float if it's equal to or less than zero run your branch node and if it is then we want to all right, this is going to look really, 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 really tacky. Um, we're just going to add in a shield, something. Something to simulate that we're holding a shield. Um, and it's going to look stupid because I'm, I don't have any shields in this. This is not that kind of project. You know what? We're holding a really big ball. Mesh. We're going to apply it to the left hand. There, there's our shield. <laughs> hey, I told you it was going to look dorky. But let's, um... There we go. So, again, I told you it would look dorky as hell. Um, let's say that's our shield. You know, we've, we've taken care to actually make it look like a shield and work like a shield and that kind of stuff. And it is a shield. So, there. So, at this point, we have our shield attached to our player and it's a static mesh, skeletal mesh, whatever. So, at this point here, if it's equal to a less than zero, then it's going to destroy itself, destroy component, whatever. Um, however you want it to just go away. Um, if it's a blueprint, you can destroy actor, that kind of stuff. Um, just to simulate that it's actually going to work, which I doubt very much. Let's go back in here to new pi. All right, so our client's sitting here with a shield. And there, we just popped it. So we did enough damage by shooting it. Uh, we didn't give it any health. Yes, fuck off, I know. Um, shield health is actually going to be um, 30. So again, um, we're going to assume that this is actually an actor instead of just a cheesy little static mesh. The shield took too much damage and got taken away. And of course, it didn't replicate. Um, just simply because um, I didn't tell it to replicate. I didn't do any replication on it. But as you can see, the uh, the server... Let's actually play it again. Alright, so client. Yeah, this is server. So, as you know, 
naturally will be setting replication on all this stuff, but it's actually receiving the damage input instead of the player. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so the destroy component is fine. I would do it a different way because it would actually be a player. So on this, apply you're applying damage to the player if you're hitting the the player. Is the shield raised? If the answer is yes, why is it true? Um, shield raised. We'll uncheck it. So the player did not receive any damage because, quote unquote, the shield was raised. So now. Our client is just doing his thing. All right, so you can see the client's health bar on the right. So now, if I shoot at the player, player receives damage, no matter what, because the shield's not raised. So you get the idea. If I ever start to do, um, well, when I start getting into the combat stuff, um, we'll do that and that, and now we're just going to go straight back to kicking a player's ass. Um, then just handle your, your death, whatever you get to this point. Um, just do custom event, death. What do you want to happen whenever the player dies? Um, at that point, we want to get our health. And we'll, first off, we'll just do a delay of two seconds, whatever. Run through your animations. We're going to, um, at this point, we're going to set our health nope. back to 100. We don't need that. So after two seconds, uh, after we're dead for two seconds, we just get our health back. So if our health is less than or equal to zero, first thing we have to do is set our health to zero and then we can run because we don't want to keep going negative no matter what and then we run death um, at this point you know Yeah, so it, it, it's one of those things where you're just going to have to break down how each thing is handled. And you do that with variables. When I perform the attack, um, so if your attack beats a guard break, and I'm trying to wrap my head around this, because is guard break being applied? If the answer is yes, proceed this way. If it is the answer is no, proceed that way. Um, you know, so you have to just that variable and that branch, that a boolean variable and a branch node is your best damn friend ever. You're going to have to sit there and keep going and going and going and sitting there and breaking down every little thing. Um, have I eaten enough roughage today? Did I take my medication today? You know, yes or no questions. A branch node is condition. What is the condition? The condition is, is my health, is my health equal to or less than zero? If, if that is the case, then 
this is what I want to do. Okay, but what if if this my health is not less than or equal to zero? Well, in that case, um, we can ask it another question: Is my health greater than or equal to or greater than one hundred? Is it greater than 100? Well, we don't want it to ever go above 100. So, um, is it now, since it is not less than or equal to 0, then we need to go to this. Well, is it greater than 100? Or if you have a max health variable, you could plug in your max health variable to there. So, is it above that? Well, we don't want it to ever be be above there, so let's set our health to 100. Because we don't want it to ever go above our max health. Of course, this is in the event any damage. Damage is not supposed to give you health, but what if you created some magical spell that... Um, uh, the idiot sword of, of reverse damage whatever I don't know it's <laughs> your thing so there's a chance of applying damage in the opposite direction you, you're applying healing or whatever I don't know they're just fail safe but you, you, you get the idea is you're doing these checks your at branch is how should I proceed if this is the case um, am I awesome yes or no um, Will I get laid tonight? If the answer is yes, take a shower, put on cologne. Um, if the answer is no, fix coffee, turn on Netflix. Uh, um, or, you know, am I lonely? <laughs> and, and am I not going to get laid and I'm lonely? Then, okay, um, engage Pornhub. Whatever, you know, you, you set up your conditions based off of the... Here's my question. Is my health this? If it is, then do this. Can my sword perform the attack? Yes or no? Um, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, you know, getting laid equals no, or if the answer is has girlfriend uh, on Friday night watch Pornhub get lotion, you know, <laughs> you know, you put in this just yes or no question. A branch is the simplest form of trying to figure out what you're trying to do. What happens? <laughs> yeah, you can use the foul language on my Discord server. Streamlabs automatically cleans that up, sorry. Uh, this is not this stream is not made for children, by the way. I, I, I have to check that box every so often. Um, because technically speaking, I don't care. And if I say, if I drop an F-bomb, I'm not going to do it just for the sake of it. But as part of normal conversation, I'm liable to drop the F-bomb as, as I see fit. So, that's what I say. Is break everything down. You know, like, say, custom events. Boom. Same thing. Um, event. Friday night. Yes, this is supposed to be a Friday night video that I'm doing on a Wednesday. Event Friday night. <laughs> okay. And this is all stuff that I'm going to delete anyway. So, um, event Friday night. Um, let's move all these to our components. Uh, let's give it a category of player stuff. Holy crap. Um, why is it when you, you immediately see somebody else's um, blueprints and you think, holy shit, that's a lot of spaghetti. Alright, so I can hide that now. Um, event Friday night. 
What's the first question? Um, uh, let's see. Single. Oh, we'll just put it on married. Yeah, we just leave it at married. So it's a boolean, not booya, but boolean. Married, yes or no? Okay. So we're going to get a reference to that. Get married? Oh, uh, uh, sorry. I've been married. I still like my ex-wife, by the way. We don't. I don't hate her or anything. We just weren't husband and wife material. And she's vegan and I like meat. That didn't work. Long story short. Um, so, am I married? If the answer is true, then I want to do something else. Um, if the answer is false um, on Friday night, uh, yeah, we'll do something else. But you get the point is, you ask that question of, I have a question. Married. Yes or no? If the answer is true, then you do one thing. If the answer is false, you do another thing. And you can trigger those events inside of your world with your assets, blueprints, Another quickie, blueprint, whatever, and go in here, add a component of a cube, Point one, make it small, add a box collision, um, yep, that's fine. Um, it doesn't matter on this because there we have a box collision and what is it going to do we want to trigger an event that's in the player and we're going to trigger this event Friday night and we'll do this box collision add event on component begin overlap we're going to um, to our, our actual player and we're going to run event Friday night drag that off event Friday night we're going to run that custom event as soon as a player steps on that by default we're not married And we'll just set that pad in here, whatever. Hello, okay. Um, next thing we want to do, get rid of you. I don't need that anymore. Um, let's say... wanted to say that and then if we're not married hello ladies all right so as we're navigating around our map doing our thing waiting for that stupid thing to operate in and go um, hello ladies I'm not married but if we change that to yes we are married Yeah, I'll take a peek at it in a second. But it all boils back down to this. is a matter of run your variables. Oh my god, what the fuck? I'm married. I don't know. And playing in these custom events, um, like this right here also, it, we can set it to toggle that information. Um, or randomize it, or whatever, you know.
break down every problem. Save all. You go away. Don't need you anymore. And we don't need you anymore. Don't need you anymore. Compost and save. Uh, we did the um, all right. Client server. All right. We'll watch the health and it's back to fall again. They ran our death event. It's just a matter of, like I said, trigger. You know. Each thing is just a matter of asking questions and getting responses. And you got to break it down that way, or else you're not going to be able to do anything. Um, yeah, that's too much to look at without proper amounts of coffee in my, my system. Um, get ready to get out of here, but... Um, But do you kind of understand though what I'm saying is um, am I standing on this this white square no so nothing's happening now that I'm standing on this I can put a cube on top or a pyramid on top of there it's all a matter of asking questions with that branch node and Yes or no? It's that branch node is is your best friend, and use it for everything. If you want to find out if you know, like we we said before, that's no problem. And and that's what I I'm trying to get through with people. I mean, I could sit here and say, okay, well, let's build a line trace by channel. Whenever I click my left mouse button, we're going to use a branch node and ask if we're in our first person perspective. If we are, then we're going to get a reference to this, and then we're going to get our world location and our forward vector. We're going to add that with a multiplied this, and then use a this channel. I could sit here and do like a lot of other channels do, and they tell you this is how you do the thing node by node by node, and are you going to learn? And I, I saw a lot of people that were, and I and I'm I'm thankful for the other person's channel. It does really good tutorials on how to do things, and he's showing. Okay, we're going to use this line trace by channel, but what we want to do, and he breaks it down in a, in a in a way that it's understandable for the most part of how you're doing this kind of stuff. How the hell do you find the start and end location of your line trace by channel? Well, where do you want it to start from? Well, I, mean, I want it to start from my FPS camera. And yes, I wanted to get that location from there, and that's where I wanted to start from. But how the hell do you figure out how to get it to end? Where do you want it to stop? Do you want it to, I want it to go on forever, you know, whatever, you know. How do you get these things to work is one type of tutorial system. and. Yes, I want to do a kind of a more of a blend of, of some of that too. Like I did earlier with the switches of how to make them work with the for each loop and that kind of stuff. John Galt's good. I like John. He's he's smart as hell and he does good work. He does have a lot better work than I do on a lot of different things. Um, you know, the other channel that I'm referring to is um Virtus learning hub um, but where he fails on some of his videos and he does a great job don't get me wrong I'm not saying anything bad about him is the majority of people that watch his kind of videos are looking for specifically uh, they'll pause the video okay I put this node down and then okay I gotta connect it to here and they're just their copy and paste mentality, and I'm I'm trying to get people out of that copy and paste mentality. Sure, if if you can watch his videos and learn how to do stuff, it's great. But I found myself watching his videos and trying to copy and paste, and that just doesn't work for every situation. I wasn't learning; I was actually just in the copy and paste mentality. 
So I had to just sit there and, and get away from his videos and other people's videos and that kind of stuff and just sit back and say, well, how do I want things to, to work? When I click my left mouse button, what needs to happen? I want to fire a line trace. But I only want that line trace to work if I'm, I, if I'm in my first person view. So I need to know that I'm in my first person view. So therefore, the branch node and asking a question, okay, this condition has been met. So now that, I, now that it has been met, I need to fire my line trace then okay where is my start location well I want to start from the location of my first person camera which is sticking out of the head so it's gonna start right here well how do I make it end? where does it end um, I wanna get the end location well I can't just plug that in there because it won't go anywhere getting my forward vector means which way am I looking towards and then multiplying it by this this is actually the range if I set this to 100, it'll only go out 100 units. If I set it to 5,000, it's a bit more usable. It'll stop the line trace at that point. Um, trace visibility. Um, you know, there's options you can select with that as well. Trace color, trace head. Um, I use for duration, you can turn it to none, and it'll hide that little red line. Um, when I actually go into playing the game, I'll do none. But while I'm using it for testing stuff, and one of the things that I did before was um, utilizing that as a tester. You know, sure I can shoot the line trace, but I want it to report back. Um, okay, we did that for damaging our actors, but I wanted to report back whatever it hits. I wanted to print out before it does all this right here and if I wanted to run this separately on its own little branch how could I get that to work without screwing with other stuff well I can sequence it run that sequencer node and I can go here I can do this and I can also do this which will be print text or you can use print string you can take hit actor just connect it right up to there huh it doesn't work okay well I can do two text and then I can plug that in there and if I did two strings I could have just plugged it straight in but whatever you know so two text whatever whatever object I hit it's gonna print it out so it's the one thing of teaching you how to do every node step by step by step um, since this and this is combined together in a single blueprint, it's going to report back the same thing because it's all combined. Um, but since these switches are separate, I can actually target that. Yeah, it does. Um, all my streams do. So I can get my light. And I use this my Tattletale tool. This is what I call it. <laughs> so um, when you're utilizing stuff like... Alright, let's save this, save this, go to, it's probably take a minute to load up, but the, like I said, I love these polygon assets from City Studios. Um, go to their, their demonstration map. There's collision issues with um, some of their models. I, as much as I love their stuff, I, I pick on them all the time about their collision boxes and having issues and trying to fix collision boxes. I know of one piece right now that absolutely just baffled me to no end. Give this a minute to load. Of why in the hell can't I go up these freaking stairs? I edit my characters width and height and everything else and I still can't get it. And I look at the the collisions on this and that and everything else and I know what the piece is and it's in this house right there. World settings, the person game mode, play. There's no player start in here, so just start wherever you you were. But I come in here, and I can't go up these stairs. And I just want to go up the damn stairs, and I can't. I just can't get up these stairs. So, okay, I get past that little blockage. And well, still, I can't get by this damn point right here. Why can't I get up these stairs? And I can... Eh. So... One of the things is the player itself. When you convert your City Studios characters over, you look at your um, 
your capsule component. Besides the, the weird camera sticking to his head. See, you got that gap right there, but you also have the width. What I usually do is I bring this capsule radius down to 36, or you can do it to 32 to thin it out a little bit. And that will help more with. Um, oh, let's not start in the ground. This is why we put player starts in. <laughs> Dumbass. And now I could walk through there because I'm not too fat. But then why can't I get up here? There is something in my way. So I can use my tattletale tool to try to find that one little freaking thing. And I believe it was this. You go to it and you look at it well it looks fine but you check your collision simple collision what the hell <laughs> the collision is way the hell over here so you click on the collision and yeah move it to the right spot and that's all it was is a broken collision just not in the right place and it's fixed just that easy well I haven't just you could probably just disable the collision and that would be okay but using the tattletale tool was able to sit there and spend the time to troubleshoot and find that one little tiny thing that prevented me from walking up the damn stairs <laughs> you know um, walk around town and look at stuff like um, where's a house with a cove in it the collision like you see right here well I, I want to walk in here no problem this used to be a big issue this collision right here the box used to go all the way around and you couldn't walk in this little notch area really sucked and pissed me off and I'd have to go back in here and make my own custom collisions this used to be broken and by using the tattletale tool I was able to find those those weird broken collisions and uh, rectify them and point them out to the city guys too like, hey this is this and you know this is how you can make that tool and okay so they can play with my tool um, you know collision on the water you can just disable the collision or on the water but the the mesh on the pool the collision on it is kind of screwy so you actually have to do stuff with that um, this used to be broken to where you couldn't walk up to the front door the collision used to go straight across and then back here so you couldn't walk in this area before because that collision was broken I still have older versions of most of the Cinti assets and I could probably load that up and show you but it's just not worth the time and effort to do it but little little notched out areas the collisions were just bad and I use that tattletale tool to define the collisions and fix them uh, little dumb things also that you can actually fix this you can open this door and create an interior and be able to walk through that building and come out this door Dumb things like making the trampoline work, or making this merry-go-round work, or making that soccer ball work. Well, how do you mean make it work? Um, right over here, simulate physics. Then I can kind of knock the ball around. Yeah, get out of there, get out of there. So yeah, I mean, do whatever you want, but to me, having this and reporting back what I was aiming at, you see, it goes through, but the green just kind of tells you where it went through. There is also a way of taking that and setting other variables with it and that kind of stuff too, but... All right, it's time for me to go heat up some more chili.
As with anything, if you guys got questions, that's why I do these streams. People jump in, ask questions, and, and like I said, I'm not trying to tell you how to do variable in node by node by node, always how to do everything correctly, but to try to give you the fuel to be able to stop letting a problem kick your ass, and you can break it down into its individual elements and then piece it together. And it's just one of those things where take your time, think about what you want to happen. And it's like I said, whenever I'm doing my line trace, I want to print out what I'm hitting, but I also want to check to see if I if I'm hitting the, my player, then I want to go ahead and, and apply damage, but only if it can be damaged is true. Um, did I get rid of that one? Yeah. So I said I can come in here and create a variable. Um, call it can take damage. I, I was working on it for a short time, but I, I was running into a problem before I installed the new hard drive. I uh, was just having so many problems with space that um, I, I just... I had to uninstall something, and I had to uninstall a lot of projects and delete a lot of projects. So I've, I've got a 500... Um, or a half terabyte... Well, I know what you meant. Um, you got a half terabyte drive that's filled with nothing but Unreal Engine 4 stuff. And unfortunately, in my main hard drive, I was just a one, one terabyte. And with Windows installed, and for some reason, I just keep losing more and more and more and more space, and I keep having to uninstall games and to make room for other crap. And so I've got a, a secondary drive just for game installs now. So it's freeing up some space on my main hard drive to do Unreal Engine projects, but the actual data stuff, the the, the Polygon, the Cindy Studios Polygon packs, I've got uh, from their website, you know, from their store, I've got versions that go back for a little ways. So, like the first release version, then this patch and that patch, I've got some of the assets I've probably got about four or five different versions of. And I need to delete the uncompressed versions and just clean up overall on the hard drive. This is the, the latest version of Town, and it's got a lot of fixes in it that thankfully I was able to, to find a lot of and, and help troubleshoot. Um, as for player base, I want to ask, can take damage? And we're just going to put in a branch. And if we can take damage, then we do that. And if we can't take damage, you can tell it, you suck, stop shooting me. Uh, whatever, you know. But we can only take damage if we're allowed to take damage. And it's just a matter of this. I think what I'm going to do for Feature Friday, since I, I did the switching earlier already, so like with this, if this is your, your map that you built and you want to play, uh, you can activate things like fixing those stairs, the ceiling fan. You can walk over here and by walking right here you can engage the ceiling fan and it'll start rotating. Um, come in here, have a seat. Um, you can walk over here and turn the TV on and it start playing a video uh, with audio and, and everything. Come in here, okay, cool, go to the fridge, do whatever you want. Um, love this asset pack, by the way. Usually move this chair out, do the, the sit and chair stuff. Weird ass sound outside. So yeah, y'all get with me. Um, you know, I, I, not much into the sword and shield thing, but I, I like it sometimes. I, I miss playing like Diablo one and two and stuff. Um, uh, I've actually got Diablo, the original. Um, I don't know what happened to my Diablo 2 CDs. 
But what I'm wanting to do for, um, and I'm trying to figure out one or two little minor details on it is actually creating a like a, a menu system for multiplayer servers and admin control panel. Whereas um, you could do things like teleport to a player. Um, one of the things that I used to like was with um, World of Warcraft. I don't have to take a look at it. I actually have been playing Raft so much lately that that's all I've been doing in the evening time before bed. Is I'll play Raft for four or five hours before I go to bed. It is an addictively relaxing game. Um, but World of Warcraft, uh, I got tired of paying Blizzard for for paying playing, so I did the private server thing for a while. And if you uh, do a YouTube search for Beefalo Bart's old channel or something like that. Uh, I've got a video on on there of one of the about one of the servers that I used to run, but used to run um, and admin and do creative content for some of the top twenty five private servers, and didn't really have the luxury of some of the things. But I I made a lot of cool content and things like that, and I did a lot of scripts back then for what I wish I could do you know all the stuff that I can do with Unreal Engine 4 now wish I could do to add in to the private servers back then but with some of the, the control panels that I used like um, if there's a player trying to do something and some freaking butthole is just griefing them Tell me what your name is. You can follow a GM ticket or a Game Master ticket. And I could input that person's information or their name or just click on their name in chat or, and just type in a command and bam. Um, yeah, my ex wife was Asian, but she didn't play games much. Uh, I could teleport to the, um, the player who was having difficulty or, you know, if this is a player right here and I see them doing something wrong I could target them like that and it would tag them as a tagged player and then I could type in a command of whatever like send them to prison and it would teleport their their character to a prison cell which we'll say is the quickie mart here Simpsons reference um, now they're in here they can't get out the cell there's no way to escape their Hearthstone doesn't work and all that crap, um, until they're unable to teleport. I could I could seize them and and teleport them to a jail, or I could freeze them in location. I could uh, kick them or ban them or whatever. <laughs> you know, um, so I, I loved having that control. So what I'm wanting to do is for my simple multiplayer team template as a derivative for. What I'm trying to do is set up a shooter template to where what happens is you get this from me and you have my simple multiplayer steam template and you'll also have um, the ability to have basic levels of combat uh, like a shooter template for this particular one um, or if you guys would rather see something with uh, swords and shield, I've actually been considering. Um, I'm cowboy, you know, Beefalo Bart, you know, I'm a cowboy name, you know, I'd be a cowboy, and uh, or a gunslinger. But thinking about doing a Wild West theme of you know six guns, lever actions, bow and arrow, spears, um, primitive weapons, you know, edged weapons, things like that and actually doing a cowboy game but the primary project that I had been doing and been working on has been save all uh, and I'll close this project for a moment um, with my stream party thing and the whole point to what it was is um 
and this is totally just I, I keep deleting it restarting it deleting it restarting it and I just I'm not happy with the way things turn out so I'll get rid of it and, and try it from scratch again but the whole concept was to have just a place to, to hang out and be with friends goof around maybe do some dancing yeah around have a seat you know it's one of those things where you know you know sit hang out with friends X-ray machine. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but more than just sitting in chairs and listening to music and having a playlist of music that's set by the user and you know that kind of stuff. But actually, you set up different game modes. Gotta love techno acts. Royalty-free music. That's good. <laughs> And yes, you can dance while you're just helping me. Um. <laughs> that song just seems to fit with that dance, too, for some reason. There's more songs in the rotation. I haven't set the full deal on this one like I did on the other one. But, you know, other than just sitting here and just... I don't know why, but I'm going to clean up this seating animation because every so often it allows that to happen. I, I just... It's one of those things where... This isn't the first time I've set up this. Now, see, it's working correctly. Sometimes a chair works, sometimes it doesn't. And this is not the first time I've set up the sitting chair thing. But the way I've got it set is... In the chair itself... See, that's something that's got to have to be fixed. Um, I'll put a link in the, um, Discord. See, that's another thing is, with that, that song is freaking addictive. I, I hate it, because I, I like it so much. <laughs> See, I can, I can dance while I was sitting down, but if I stop dancing, I sit back down again. And it breaks the sit down thing. So it would be one of those things where I've got to go through and just break up all these little tiny things like, eh, why is it doing that? Um, and it's all a matter of... Uh, do, 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 do. Um, player base. Start a view change... Dance. So... To stop the ability to uh, see, I'm starting to do all the replication and everything for the dancing. Um, it's one of those things where I'm gonna have to add in some branch nodes. Um, I was having a problem where you could jump, but once you jump, you could start dancing in the air, and oh, like I said, I'll have to, I'll have to check out the. Um, that was it, Age of Wushu. But I'm gonna have to put in another thing in here. Is I'm not in the not able to do, see, I jump and I could dance while I was in the air, and then you could use that to kind of cheat jump. And I'm gonna have to put in another branch here. And with the sit in chair at chair, um. Setting the sitting um, chair occupies another thing that I'm working on to prevent somebody else from being able to sit in the same chair that you're sitting in. I'll finish getting that all done. Um, sitting. So all you need to do here is print another branch and. is sitting. And if the answer is false, go over 
here and false then there then no I'm not falling no I'm not sitting that kind of stuff I set my variables to allow me to do that so now that should fix the fact that um, you see all these this is, is the sitting thing is let's see if I can click on it it's just a that's just a chair but I also have it setting base which you can just drop in front of anywhere where you want the player to be able to sit and they can do that if I want to set it up right there on a table where you can sit on that table you're gonna sit facing the big red arrow there and I didn't save it for some reason save don't know why I'm not able to sit down. And see, that's the broken version. See? You can sit. <laughs> and that's the broken version again. You see, you're sitting too far forward. And that's the normal version. So now... I'm sitting, so I can't dance anymore. So I, that's that's now fixed. But now look at it. It was working correctly, and then so I got to go through and clean up all my my, my code here. I hit number one key to start dancing, and yeah, I'll I'll clean that up later. But you get the idea of that's what I'm trying to do here. Is um, and I'll go ahead and before I run away, I will actually put down the link for Technoax. Actually, I think it's in the video description um, for Technoax. Um, and let's see here. I lost all my bookmarks. Yeah, T E K N O A X E. Um, you get there, you go to music. Um, a lot of cool stuff. I hate to bra browse a website while I'm streaming a video, so. But little stuff like background music. You click on that, and you got a bunch of different ones, and then. Um, Let's see here. You can pick one, and that's gonna be really screwy. It's playing a YouTube video, right here. So you play the preview. Yeah, this is no bueno here for me. And you get a preview of the the actual music itself, um, but different categories: EDM, dubstep. Um, down tempo, background stuff, world, 8 bit percussion, Halloween introductions, soundscapes. I really like that. Um, um, some of the jazz stuff is relatively new for him. And I've been using his stuff for quite a while and loving his stuff for quite a while. You got action or horror or drama, looping sounds. Um, retro. What was the name of that track? Well, I guess I can look right here. Um, new. Um, Mysterious Cat. I thought it was in this one right here. It's got so much new stuff, too. Um, I 
unusual names and you can't really judge by the name sometimes and the images it's just one of those things where you almost got to listen to them all to kind of get what really suits your needs um, updates music um, where the hell is a search block Huh. Well, all else fails. Just Technoax, Mysterious. What the hell? I can't. I can't type. Mysterious cat. Yeah. I don't want to go to the YouTube link. I want to go to... the actual site. But the track is called Mysterious Cat. I was just trying to find a direct link for it. Kind of hoping there would be a direct link somewhere. But, yeah. Um, I'll try to get it. Mysterious Cat is the name of the track. I hate going to a YouTube video for that. Well, I mean, it's got a, um, a direct link right there. Holy crap. Well, it's a long-ass redirect, but that link I just put in there in uh, Discord, that's a direct link to this page right here. Well, direct link to this page right here. Um, Let's try this instead. That sh should work. No, that one didn't work. Um, it did, but it didn't. Um, if it doesn't work, let me know. And, um, but that's it right there. Techno Act, Mysterious Cat. Love that song. Um, but check out his library of music. I, I absolutely love his stuff. Some great things in there. I mean, I've got a pretty big long list of, of music from him that I've downloaded already. Um, Alright, cool. Yeah. Um, so many hard drives. I've converted some over to Wave. Um, just because I was using Wave files instead of file media source like this. Um, sometimes it can be a pain in the butt to make sure you get it done correctly, but like Bad Cat, Coming Home, Mysterious Cat. Like Battle Cat is another good one too. Um, is Battle Cat is also kind of a laid back theme but it actually has voice it's not just synth only I've used that one quite a bit too um, but, but check it out if you've got any favorites let me know I'll check them out also and if you're looking I maybe might know a particular one. We're out the two hour mark. Um I said keep up with me on Discord and if you want to chat more. Um is that I'm around in and out quite a bit, so
I'm actually going to go eat and start looking into doing more on the for the actual Friday video a admin control panel where it doesn't check to verify whether or not you're um, admin or not god damn I hate notifications I'm gonna unsub I try not to do much in the way of the at here's and everybody's and that kind of stuff on my server I don't like people doing mentions with anybody's name on it much less mine on discord um, I really hate it it's all in my server rules and all that stuff too but um, it's just I hate notifications I hate them on my phone I hate them on my computer I hate them everywhere if I want to know if there's something there I'm gonna go look for it but some things I might like but I just I hate them I hate looking down and seeing a number that, that somebody has sent me a freaking discord message or whatever and I will actually I'm just left the server that, that that one was on if they overuse the dimensions and crap like that so I've toned down on that quite a bit but I'm gonna start setting up for um, doing the admin control panels and that kind of stuff and whitelisting is something else I'm trying to figure out how to do and whitelisting means that basically if I want Emery there to be a moderator on my my game um, first off um, they're a normal player running around I can look at find out who's you know, get a player list of who's on the, the, the server and then from that player list I want to be able to say okay that person is in the game I can teleport to them um, not inside of them but teleport to them to right there next to them and um, then say okay I want this person to become a moderator so I can go through my admin control panel that only I since I'm an admin have the ability to use and checking the players level or rank to see if they're capable of, of doing certain things as a regular player you can just run around and do your thing but you you can hit the keys for the admin button and nothing will happen to bring up the admin menu it'll be there but you can't see it you can't access it because it needs to do that verification of your your level no because I don't like um, it's not that I don't want to follow somebody else's dream I'm too old to be chasing a, a 15 year old's dream so anybody who wants to join me and, and go to work with me with the potential of doing great things more than welcome to but what I find is working with a game development team in the normal sense unless there's a paycheck involved nobody's gonna stay focused if I try to get you to join and build my core and just an example um, my idea of a core which pull the project back up is I want to build a core system core system will be the admin control panel it'll be the uh, everything I mean everything everything it will be the main menu so if you go into this still young kids young 40 year olds I tell you you 40 year old kids are just crazy um, but yeah like, like this a main menu system to where um, it's got your full steam functionality and the the product will be on steam um, is how I'm setting it up or whatever but if you choose to go on a single player you can run around play single player do your thing um, go back to the main menu multiplayer host a new game this is the old version let me actually go into Do, 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 do. This is one, but yeah, building the core system essentially is um, the menu system that's customizable, and yep, yeah, staying on the game. I'm 51 years old. I, I it's hard for me to to want to try to work for younger folks, you know. 
So this, you know, got rid of the um, the red lines, cleaned up the menu a little bit, make it easier to work with. Um, got a single player, and now comes up with um, a map selection. Okay, I'm defaulted to the lobby map. I don't want to use level two. You know what? I don't want to do that. So let's go to a multiplayer game. Let's host. I'm going to put the server name in here and choose the map that I want and go into the game. And then it launches into the game. There you look, I'm in level one. Yay. And there's much rejoicing. But the core itself, well, I had to retract all the comments, but um, the core would have sword combat, shield combat, bows, pistols, rifles, shotguns, rocket launchers, grenades. Um, it'll have combat in all its forms already there. All right, take care, Emery. Sorry about um, missing your, your goodbye comment there. Um, so, yeah, essentially, all the forms of combat will be already in the core. Um, it's just a matter of setting up the menu to be more bulletproof, all the combat systems to be bulletproof, meaning doesn't matter what character it is, if I'm using UE4 Mannequin or Cindy Studios characters, um, basically as little as possible that actually impacts that player. Um, so when you go into the player base you know, or your player character, let see, I haven't cleaned this up yet, um, in here, you can select you know, either to use the standard cookie cutter player or create um, a new player character for each. Basically, everything inside the core is there. And if you join the team and you help get the, the core bulletproof and everything else, you get to use the core for whatever the hell you want. Um, the core becomes something for sale. All the animations get put in and everything is all there and get sold for 200 bucks or 300 bucks or whatever else um, and you know once the the core is is out there basically you you buy a copy of my core game mechanic and you decide you want to do um, sword and shield or a wild west themed game especially if you're using like Cindy Studios characters it becomes really really easy you build your cool ass map and you select a Wild West character uh, base and there you go. You select your, your 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 character style, whether it's you know Wild West or modern combat or future combat or sword and shield or whatever. You pick that and there you go. You could use your map to say to set specific variables like in your main menu map or whatever you're you're playing map you open your level blueprint and you cast to your character that you're going to be using in this this being like wild west game or cowboy game you cast to that player base system or that player or wild west player character and you can say okay i want the player to be able to use bow and arrow or not use them or whatever you can set map variables you can set whatever you need but everything is there all you're doing basically after you get the core is you design the pretty elements of the game for the the menu you design the the maps and put your own assets in the only assets that are going to be in the core is all the animations animation montages and a basic character like this is a player base and just you walk around and look pretty but if you select wild west category then you have wild west player um, for your your actual player mechanics it'll have all the weapon animations and combat animations you need for a wild west endeavor uh, if you choose the um, medieval version you know player character swords and shields or the magic version where they have you know, it's just everything encompassed in there already there and all you're doing is just saying yes they can use this or even the player itself player base when you create your map you can set up um, a variable system in your map system 
your map blueprint to cast to that player base and say can they use pistols yes or no can they use rifles yes or no can they use shotguns yes or no can they use a sword yes or no daggers yes or no and, and basically go through that whole I mean hell you could set up in a, in a data folder like there's a map list there if you, that I'm not using but you set up a variable here like um, pistols uh, create a new variable rifles you just go through this whole list and they're very it's a boolean variable system um, don't even have to change anything else um, shotguns swords you know just go through them and make a a structure and this is what this is a structure to make all you do is you right click go to blueprints structure um, another new one and we'll call this axes you know you one-handed swords two-handed swords you can break it down even more like that um, and yeah, the list will go on of whatever weapons you can use so we've got that now if I go into my character and I'm not going to keep this but I can create a new variable um, weapons usable Yo, what's up, bro? I was getting ready to end the stream an hour ago. Let <laughs> me actually change that to... I know it says map list, because that's what the album was called. You pull that variable in, get... And then you can actually break that variable. And now you have all these lovely little things here you can choose from and say can I use pistols yes um, then you set up a, another in here um, but checking that and like say right here weapons usable let's create another variable um, yeah you know, in you're not locked into that as well with this um, data you can actually pull up and use these variables can be anything any type of variable you can think of. So, um, and that's all you got to do is just create a variable here, and then you can break that and then show, okay, um, custom event, just for whatever. I'm going to delete this off, all from the project here. And another new variable here can um, pistols question mark and this is actually going to be a boolean so yeah it just can can I use pistols um, whatever you know just you can just create your stuff based off of your, your data list and that kind of stuff and also, I will have it all there so that um, whenever you're setting up your, your blueprints for the individual style of combat on that particular map, um, I would actually do this in the, the map blueprint. So when you, your character goes into there, you don't really have to set up sword and shield mechanics because it's already going to be there um, inside the, the mechanics of it. And then whenever you encounter... A situation where you need to be able to use a dagger well the animation montages are already there you pick up a dagger dagger or you equip it and then you can use it same thing with a sniper rifle because each type of weapon is going to have its own combat mechanism so I want all those combat mechanisms already in place so that no matter what all you got to do is just enable it and use it you pick up a pistol well if you don't want your player to be able to use pistols don't put a freaking pistol in your freaking map simple as that. I want everything for the core. In and out, easy to use, and just there, you know? So basically, 
you come in here once the the thing's up and running you've got um okay well i'm gonna do single player you pick your your map level or whatever and then you hit launch or you just say if you want to do multiplayer you want to find a game now i've changed this right here a little bit too in this version um this will be all part of the new version of the simple multiplayer steam template um that's will be available soon i just got to finish doing it um will actually show not just the server name, a join button, and a, and a fake ping. It's going to show a join button, the server name, the map that they're playing on. So if I'm hosting this game and I'm playing level 2, then and my game name is Fart Monkey. So now, whenever someone's searching for my game, they see that they found the game called Fart Monkey, and I'm playing on map level two. So, and the key is, if you're doing this, and you decide that you want to change from using my main menu map as your your map, you always have to remember one little thing. If you're using my my simple multiplayer Steam template, that put that in your frickin' main menu map. 100% must have. Event begin play, destroy a session, get player controller. You want everybody that's in the game to destroy session whenever they choose to go to the main menu. If you don't put that in there, if you're playing a game and some in the host leaves, you're still stuck in the session. You can't join any other session because you're stuck in that session. Nothing has told you to go back to there. Um, if the host leaves, you get kicked out automatically back to the main menu map, which then destroys your session. So now you can just join a new session. Yeah, I went through a lot of shit trying to get that figured out a couple years ago. All right. A recap on, on what we covered on the first part of the video. And then I'm going to get out of here since this video has been going for over two hours. Um, and I'm starting to get that panic mode setting in a little bit. Doing okay, but I can feel it creeping in. Where is that project? Oh. I gave it a good name that I wouldn't forget what it was. I forgot what it was. Because I was planning on doing this video Friday... And the first part of the video and I'll probably recap some of this on Friday in a short feature Friday video um, was specifically about the switching portion so that um, use lamp switching um, turn on the single lamp or multiple lamps because the lamp switch is actually tied to a number so they can be applied individually in a toggle fashion because essentially what happens is when you pick your you put your wall switch in and your lamp switch to use use switch number one Okay, you click on the switch. This is switch number one. This is switch number two. This is switch number three. You change the number, and this switch operates both of those lights because this one right here, it's set to use switch 12, switch 12, and this is switch 12. So if I come in here and trigger this, it triggers both lights. This one's these are all individuals but you can also use it to trigger multiples okay, right there you see it's on the lights you know kind of hard to see in, in bright daylight here um, and also switching you can switch static meshes to switch that one on and off or switch them from one to another so that's what we're covering and I will do a more in-depth 
video on this on Friday. This was supposed to be for Feature Friday. So I just put a box collision there just to turn it on and off. Originally I had a white cube there that whenever you turned it on it turned gray. Whenever it turned off it turned back to white again. But yeah, the the main body of what I'm going to be doing is working on and if I can't get the admin stuff done then or at least partially working so we need someone to test with on that. And I'm going to fuss at one person really quickly, and then I'm gone. Uh, yeah, all that's replicated. Works just fine. Um, so here's client. Server. I want them off. So there. I can turn it back on. Nope, I want you on. There we go. I'm going to turn every damn light on. And since you're an asshole, pow, 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 pow. Shoot you in the face. <laughs> oh, turn that one off, too. Turn that one off. Oh, no, nope, turn it off. <laughs> you go off too. Yeah, it works just fine. Yep. Actually, Thankfully, the way these work is they don't need any replication. They, they work. Um, because of the way that it's done, there was no need to actually do any replication on it. Um, the desk lamp essentially has event begin play, set the light bulb to no visibility, turn the visibility off of the light bulb. That's it. And I just put a lamp and a light, and that was it. The um, the switch itself, whenever you walk into the box collision, it casts to whoever the character is that turned it on, or it walked into that. It uses the switch, which is that functionality up there. Um, gets a reference to the switch, gets a world location, and plays the click sound. Um, this right here is actually this. So get all actors of class for each loop. Um, it confirms that the switch number here, which is exposed so you can see it, is actually the set the same as the switch number because it's calling back the desk lamp. Um, it's checking to see if the the switch to use on the desk lamp is the same as the number here in this blueprint. And if it is, then toggle the visibility of the light bulb. That's all it's doing. I didn't have to hit anything fancy for replication or anything else. It just worked. And I like it when shit just works. I mean, even these, they work just fine. I mean, all this does is turn from um, one mesh to another. I didn't have to do anything fancy for replication. Same thing with this. It just adds, or turns the visibility of the... Uh, the pyramid on top on and off. This toggles the uh, the visibility of the light bulb. Hell, one of the things that I had set up was um, an invisible bridge that was made out of uh, a block that was glass. So you could come up here and walk around. It wasn't there, but as soon as you cross over the box collision, a bridge appeared and now you can walk across it. Or I had a target set up right here, and it got hit, then it would make the bridge become visible or whatever. So that was all the whole point of the switching. That was that. Um, the video will be live to, to rewatch, so you can watch the, the beginning part again. Um, it'll probably take about 20-30 minutes for it to, to reset. But with that, I have a pot of chili calling my name, and 
Thank God there's no smell of vision on YouTube, because y'all will thank me later. All right. Love you guys. And not just because it's cold. We'll see you around. Catch me on Discord.